Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to take you on a journey into the magical world of words. As Sigmund Freud once said, words have magical power. They can bring the greatest happiness or the deepest despair. I like to think of words as magical spells. If used responsibly, words can inspire millions to make positive changes in their community, empower people to be innovators, or heal someone who is wounded both emotionally and physically. But if used irresponsibly, words can be destructive, have the power to cause lots of pain, or negatively change the pathway of someone's life. I myself was caught in a spell of negativity. Back when I was a little kid who had, s <laughs> who had so much hope, joy, and excitement going to kindergarten, saw my teacher, who on the outside looked so trusting and caring. Little me said to myself, whatever this person does is going to be the right thing. But that was far from the truth. She always told me that I was doing things wrong. She would call me out for my mistakes in front of my peers, like using the wrong type of blue for a small project, and change my precious green card into a yellow one. <laughs> but the worst thing that I remember her doing is telling my friends, don't be Xander's friend, or else you will turn into a crybaby like him. When I heard her say this, my brain and my heart believed it, and I absorbed it as the truth. This deeply impacted me. It caused me to be less social and shut myself out from most people I knew at the time. This even impacted my home life. If my parents brought friends over, and they brought their kids over, my first thought was to distance myself and get as far away as possible. And guess what? The entire time I was at my school, I made no new friends. Because the deep feeling of failing her and others was buried into my brain. And even though I learned to recover from that moment, it still stings to think about today. But now, let's dive into on how positive words can change someone's life. In particular, guess who? Mine. <laughs> Back in third and fourth grade, I wasn't really the most brave kid. I was pretty shy, and I think you know why. And I moved to this new school here in Escondido named Conway Academy. But at this school, I found out that students were required to greet visitors such as the superintendent of the school district. And when I found this out, I was shook. I was not thrilled at all. I, <laughs> I did not want to do that. But then it changed what I met when I met a teacher named Mrs. Ellsworth, who persuaded me to join this leadership crew named Ambassadors which required me to greet visitors, but also give them an informational tour about our school. I don't even know how she convinced me to do it, honestly, when it was like the last thing I wanted to do. <laughs> Maybe it was because she was one of the most patient, kindest, and loving teachers that I have ever met. She would always tell me things that boosted my confidence, like, you never fail to make me proud or your talent in speaking truly is a special gift. Because she saw potential in me and used my mistakes to help me grow into a better person, I'm now able to speak confidently in a public environment. For example, in front of all of you. <laughs> so 
So, as you may be able to see, words have immense power. They can change someone's life for the good or for the bad. And don't think I'm just making stuff out about this immense power stuff. In a book called Words Can Change Your Brain by Dr. Andrew Newberg, a neuroscientist, and Mark Robert Waldman, a communications expert, states that positive words can alter the expression of genes, strengthen areas in our frontal lobe, and promote cognitive function. Phrases about love, encouragement, and compliments can help our brain enter a state of positivity emotionally and physically while also changing our brain functions. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. And you might be thinking at this point while I'm talking, hey Xander, I want to learn how to use the power of words responsibly. Well, it starts with this. It starts with us being thoughtful and mindful of the kinds of words we use. So before you speak, always ask yourself a question. Is what I'm about to say going to harm this person or inspire them? A great example of inspiration through words is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his famous speech, I Have a Dream. His words did not just speak of a vision, but they ignited a movement that continues to change the lives of millions of people today. Real quick, let me ask the audience a question. How many of you are parents? Okay, quite a lot. So let me ask the parents. How would you inspire your kiddos if you found out that they were struggling to keep up with their grades? Would you tell them that they need to pay more attention to the teacher, you need to read more books, and you need to get off those dang video games? <laughs> or would you tell them that you believe in them and their abilities to make the right decisions and that you can't wait to see how they figure out how to improve? And as a kid who has experienced both pretty recently, the second option worked a lot better for me. <laughs> Additionally, we could also think of ourselves as gardeners. Every word that we speak or write could be imagined as a seed that we plant. When we plant seeds of positivity, love, and encouragement, we will make a beautiful garden for us and the people around us. But when we plant seeds of hate, criticism, and negativity, we will make a field of weeds that choke out the beauty and charm of life. In conclusion, words are powerful tools. They are magical spells that can create or destroy. Be the gardener of positivity and watch as your world and the world of others around you blooms in response. Thank you.